Here is a review of some internal anatomy of a dogfish shark. I'm pulling the stomach a little bit more towards the caudal end of the shark in order to help identify the esophagus, which is here. It is the anterior most portion of the gut. Food enters the mouth, moves past the pharynx, and into the esophagus. So the esophagus connects the mouth to the stomach. The stomach of the shark is a very large J-shaped organ. A lot of mechanical digestion happens here. It's got quite a bit of folded tissue inside called the rugae. Having these folds allows for the stomach to expand to hold the prey that the sharks tend to swallow whole. The stomach itself is a very muscular organ, which is useful as the shark requires it to be able to grind up the food as much as possible prior to the food entering the intestinal portion of the digestive system. Partially digested food will enter the duodenum, which is the first portion of the intestine of many vertebrate animals. The duodenum is going to receive a lot of digestive enzymes from other various parts of the digestive system. Both the pancreas and liver produce components necessary for the chemical digestion of food, and those components are added to the food in the duodenum. Then working our way caudally through the digestive tract, this is the spiral intestine. The reason that this is called the spiral intestine is because even though it may look like a very straight organ, within the intestine is a spiral of tissue that greatly increases the surface area within the intestine. The intestine is filled with capillaries and other small blood vessels to carry the digested nutrients into the bloodstream to distribute around the shark. So having a great deal of surface area is really useful for the shark to be able to efficiently absorb nutrients from their food. Caudal to the intestine, after we lose all the blood vessels and internal spiraling tissue, we have the rectum, and that is where solid waste forms and is stored before elimination through the cloacal opening. Now on to some of the accessory organs of the digestive system the ones that aren't in the actual digestive tract itself. First, we have the liver. The liver of the sharks is extremely large and oily. It is responsible for producing bile to help break down fats in the food that they eat. It also detoxifies blood, and it produces a rather large amount of oil. Unlike many bony fishes, sharks do not have a swim bladder or gas bladder to provide buoyancy. To help compensate for their tendency to sink, their livers have a large amount of oil that is less dense than seawater. And here is the gallbladder, which is this green structure that stores bile that is produced by the liver. The pancreas was a bit difficult to see in many of our dissection specimens this year. It is typically located on the ventral side of the digestive system near the junction of the duodenum and spiral intestine. It is typically a light tan to brown structure and very flattened. The pancreas helps with digestion by producing enzymes needed to break down the large chunks of food most sharks bite out of, and it helps keep their metabolism at a fast pace, which is useful because they swallow their food whole. The spleen is not actually a part of the digestive system, but it is located amongst the digestive organs. The spleen is responsible for creating red blood cells, and it is also where the immune system functions to fight off pathogens. Moving back cranially in the shark, we will look at some of the heart structures and structures associated with the heart. The heart is very difficult to access in these organisms because it is well protected by thick cartilage tissue. Opening this up a bit, there is a little white triangle of tissue right around here that is called the sinus venosus. Looking on the other shark, it is located in the same spot, just dorsal to the ventricle. The deoxygenated blood will come from the body and enter the sinus venosus right here. The sinus venosus will then send blood to the atrium. Sharks only have two chambers of their hearts, an atrium and a ventricle. 
The single atrium is very thin-walled with two lateral bulging lobes, and it pumps blood to the ventricle, which is the second chamber of the heart. It is significantly more muscular than the atrium or sinus venosus are, and it is responsible for pumping blood out of the heart. The blood leaves the ventricle via a blood vessel called the conus arteriosus. This very large vessel is muscular and also pumps blood. It contains valves to help direct the blood to the gills and other parts of the body. So a quick review. The flow of blood through the heart begins with deoxygenated blood entering the sinus venosus. Then it moves to the atrium. Then into the ventricle. And finally, out of the heart into the conus arteriosus. Back over to the female shark for some mouth anatomy. Dogfish shark teeth are specialized for grasping, cutting, and crushing rather than piercing. There are multiple rows of teeth on the upper and lower jaws. The pharynx of the shark is the throat from which gills extend on either side. Food will pass from the mouth through the pharynx and into the esophagus. The gill arches are visible on either side of the pharynx and they help support the gills. Extending off of the gill arches and also made of cartilage are structures known as the gill rakers. The gill rakers are similar to a comb and look a bit like teeth. They are used to prevent food particles from getting into the gills of the shark since they tend to be kind of messy eaters. The gills themselves are made up of highly folded lamellae, which have a great deal of blood vessels in them. This is so carbon dioxide can be left at the gills and oxygen can be removed from the water and put directly into the bloodstream via the gills. Having this structure be so highly folded increases the amount of surface area of the gills so that they can exchange gas very efficiently. Finally, in the mouth cavity, we have the tongue. The shark's tongue is immovable. It is a thick piece of cartilage located on the floor of the mouth. Sharks do have taste buds. However, they are not actually located on the tongue. We will now move on to the urogenital structures. This is a female shark. Regardless of the shark's sex, it will have kidneys. The kidneys of the shark are located under a tough strip of connective tissue, which I am moving out of the way so that we can see the kidneys a little better. The kidneys are flattened, ribbon-like, darkly colored structures lying dorsally on either side of the midline along the entire length of the body cavity. The caudal portion of the kidney is involved in the manufacture and transport of urine, and the urine will be transported out of the body via the cloaca. These organisms also contain a structure in the caudal end of their body called the rectal gland. The rectal gland removes sodium chloride from the blood of the shark, helping it with osmoregulation or maintaining the proper water-salt balance in its body it tends to be fairly highly vascularized. As I said before, this is a female shark. The shark will therefore have ovaries. Here's the ovary right here. Oftentimes with our pregnant sharks, the ovaries will contain very mature eggs, which end up taking up quite a bit of the body cavity. This particular pregnant shark does not have very large eggs in its ovaries right now. Eggs will form inside the ovaries and then will travel towards the exit of the body via the oviduct. So the oviduct serves as an egg passageway and the fertilized eggs will finally settle into the uterus of the shark. The dogfish shark has two uteri. The function of a shark uterus is to retain developing offspring. Sharks are ovoviviparous. This means that they retain their developing embryos and fetuses However, there is no placenta connection between the offspring and mother. Therefore, she does not provide any direct nutrition to her offspring. Instead, the internally developing embryos rely solely on a yolk sac to provide nutrition. I'm now moving back to the male shark. 
Even though this is a fairly young specimen, it's very easy to see all of the structures that we need to, to be able to identify this male. As I stated before, both males and females will have kidneys. They are used to help rid the body of nitrogenous waste. I was actually able to separate the kidney off of the body wall a little bit to see it more clearly. And once again, towards the caudal end of the body is the rectal gland has the same function as a female shark. Moving back toward the cranial end of the body cavity, located in the exact same place that the ovary was in the female, is where you will find the male testis. The shark has one on either side of its body, and it is where the male sperm will develop and mature. And they will leave the testis and travel down a highly coiled structure that sits just ventral to the male shark's kidney. This coiled structure is called the vas deferens. Sometimes it's referred to as the ductus deferens, and in the male, it, transport, it transports sperm through the coiled tube toward the caudal end of the body. Near the cloacal opening of the shark, the tube becomes less coiled and widens significantly, and once it is completely straightened and widened, it is the seminal vesicle. The seminal vesicle is where sperm is stored prior to leaving the body. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy this video, and have a great day.